Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Can everything that has breath that is watching this broadcast right now begin to praise God? We praise him for his goodness. We praise him for his excellent power. We praise him for his daily benefits. We praise him for his great. We praise him for he continues to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think of him. We praise him because he is the God who always outdo or outdoes himself. We praise him because he is the God who always supersedes our expectations he surpasses our expectations he is the god who is always the wow factor in our situations our god is an on-time god and when he shows up he has a way of sweeping us off our feet and that is why we praise god because even when we don't deserve his tender mercies his loving kindness his faithfulness his acts of giving toward us he still shows up and he shows up big time so let everything that has breath begin to open up your mouth and break the silence in your atmosphere let everything that has breath begin to lift up a hallelujah let everything that has breath begin to shout shout a psalm shout a praise shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph let everything that has breath begin to become oh glory to God wild for God in the spirit let everything that has breath begin to praise God like there is no other day left to praise him oh glory to God let everything that has breath praise the almighty God he's worthy he is worthy he's worthy to be praised he's the one who gives us beauty for ashes strength for fear we worship him today in the beauty of holiness. A special welcome to persons who have already joined. Hallelujah. Welcome one and all. And as you join, you're invited to do what we do best here. Which is to ensure that we don't keep the word of God to ourselves. What we try to do is to empower others, encourage others, and to uplift others. And the way of doing so is not to force them to come. Because we're not into the forcing business because our God is not a forceful God. But we gently extend the invitation by hitting that share button. So we end up sharing on our pages, we share on our profiles, and we share in the different platforms or on the different platforms that are available or to our disposal we praise god today i thank him for you i thank you for all those people who have been faithful to join night after night i especially want to acknowledge persons who are watching from the uk we know that whilst it's night time here in the caribbean it is early morning for them and so I want to thank those persons who perpetually make this sacrifice to worship with us virtually, just because you understand that there is a joy that comes with gathering with the other saints, with gathering with persons who are like-minded, with persons who are as passionate for God. And so I want to extend greetings to you in no other name, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of the living God. Thank you to all those who are in Jamaica who have joined. I usually ask that persons tell me where they're watching from. And while I'm asking you to do same, there are persons who are not necessarily in Kingston. 
who are logged on to the broadcast. You're probably in St. Elizabeth. You probably are in West Milan. Maybe you're in Clarendon, wherever you are. I want you to indicate where on the island you are. We want to thank you also for joining. And as you join, you go right ahead and you hit that share button. If you have not yet turned on your notification so that you can become aware of the times when I am live, then you can also do so. Thank you everyone for joining. Let us go into prayer as we prepare our hearts for the dissecting of the word of truth. Father God Almighty, we thank you. We lift you up, Lord God. Father, we thank you that your word is already anointed. We thank you that you have made a deliberate drawing or pulling, Lord, of those you want to hear the word tonight. Let he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear tonight what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Can I say that again? Let he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Almighty God has to say tonight. I thank you, God, for prepared and fertile grounds in our hearts. I thank you that you have sent out your sower. Your sower has been commissioned by you to sow seeds, to plant seeds, good seeds. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, that you will add the water. You will add the nutrients. You will add the substance. You will cause the growth. You will cause the nurturing. You will cause the springing forth and the spreading. We thank you, Holy Ghost. It's not by might nor by power that this thing shall be accomplished, but it shall be accomplished by your Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to God. I thank you, Lord God. That your words will be riveting tonight. I thank you, Lord, that they will be very sharp in the ears of your people. I thank you that many who shall hear my voice tonight, even as you speak, their ears shall tingle. Yes, Lord, there shall be a tingling of spiritual ears. There shall be an arrest. That will occur of person's spirits tonight. I thank you God that you are already connecting. You are already pulling. You are already drawing. You are already knocking. Behold you stand at the door and you knock on the hearts of your people tonight. I pray that they will hear your voice. And not even mine. But may they hear you. May they see you. May they receive you. May they follow you. Hallelujah to your name, God. May they bow down to you. May they extol you and worship you in spirit and in truth and give you the respect you so deserve. All honor, all glory belong to you, God. None goes to self. I don't want any God. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. Let all the honor go to you. Let all the praise go to you. Lord God, let all the reverence go to you. I thank you, God, that this vessel of mine is becoming weakened so that your strength can be perfected in it. I thank you, Holy Ghost, that at this moment, Nothing about Shadeen matters. Nothing, nothing. She's irrelevant right now. She's insignificant right now. She's decreasing right now so that your Holy Spirit can increase on the inside of her. Oh, glory to your name, God. Amplify this voice so that death will hear tonight. Let them be without excuse. Amplify your voice through me and your anointing, oh God. So that those who love Lord God to be in excuse. That this evening they will be without. Let them not say they never heard. Let them not say they never saw. Let them be without excuse. Oh glory to God. We give you praise, Father. 
for the thing that you will do in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name. I want us to turn our Bibles real quickly to Amos, the book of Amos. I was actually praying to the Lord today and I was like, God, what is it that you want me to talk about? And as I was in an atmosphere of prayer, inquiring of the Lord, trying to figure out what he wanted me to talk to you about, I heard Amos. Now, we don't often hear preachers or ministers of the word going to this particular book. And of course, if it was up to my flesh alone, I would not have reached in this book. But I like to consult the Holy Spirit. I like when he speaks. And so he had me going to Amos. I had not a clue what he wanted to talk about. But as I was in chapter one of Amos, he started to speak. And that is how we derived at our title today, which I want some persons to put <clears throat> on the screen. The title of tonight's message is Fire to the Enemy. I want some people to put that in caps. Fire to the enemy tonight. Whether he is ready for it or not, that is not our concern. Fire to the enemy tonight. Hallelujah. And so let us read the word. Let's hear what it says. I believe I'm going to stop at verse 10. Verse 10. In terms of the reading. So the word of the Lord according to Amos 1. The words of Amos. Who was among the herdsmen of Tekoa. Which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. And in the days of Jeroboam. The son of Joash king of Israel. Two years before the earthquake. And he said, the Lord will roar. Tell somebody, the Lord will roar. The Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the inhabitants or habitations of the shepherds shall mourn and the top of Carmel shall wither. Thus says the Lord God, for three transgressions of Damascus and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. I want somebody to put that word threshed on the screen. But I will send a fire into the house of Hazael, which shall devour the places of Ben-Hadad. I will break also the bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitant from the plain of Avon and him who holds the scepter from the house of Eden and the people of Syria shall go into captivity unto Kir, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, I love these words. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire. Tell somebody God will send a fire. Oh, glory to God. On the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. And I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod and him who holds the scepter from Ashkelon. And I will turn my hand against Ekron. And the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says the Lord God. Verse 9. Thus says the Lord. For three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom and remembered not the brotherly covenant. Verse 10 and last. But I will send a fire. Tell somebody God will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus which shall devour the palaces thereof. Oh, glory to God. Tell somebody fire to the enemy. I don't hear you. Tell somebody fire to the enemy tonight. I want you to put some fire on that screen. Fire to the enemy. Praise be to God. Now, if you've just joined, you're welcome to share this broadcast with your friends and loved ones because we're about to dissect the word. Are you ready? Tell somebody revelation time. Now, we're in the book of Amos chapter 1. Now, 
Amos happens to be one of those who are referred to in scripture as minor prophets. When you talk about minor prophets, we're talking about Habakkuk, we're talking about Malachi, we're talking about Joel, we're talking about Zephaniah, and those, oh glory to God, who are not so often mentioned, to be honest. Oftentimes when we talk about uh, uh, prophets of the Bible, we think about Ezekiel, we think about Isaiah, we think about Daniel. Not much emphasis is usually placed on these uh, and it is not a case where their work was insignificant or less important than the work performed by Isaiah. But for some reason, there are some theologians who have categorized and have said that some prophets are called major prophets while some are called minor. Amos happens to be one who was referred to as a minor prophet. Now, important to note is that God sent prophets to the split house of Israel. We all know that there was a splitting that occurred under the leadership of Jeroboam and Rehoboam. We all know that there was a house of Israel and then there was a house of Judah. There were some prophets that were sent to the house of Israel while there were some prophets that were sent to the house of Judah. The prophets that were sent to the house of Israel, oh, I forgot to share. Mighty God, the prophets that were sent to the house of Israel, glory to God, Israel is actually known, thank you so much, as the northern kingdom, while Judah is known as the southern kingdom. I want somebody to put that on the screen. So Israel is northern kingdom, while Judah is southern kingdom, okay? So some of the prophets were sent to the northern kingdom, while some were assigned to the southern kingdom. There's also something specific that I must mention. And it is that the timings of these prophets or the ministry of these prophets was very important and very specific as well. Okay. There were some prophets whose assignment or oh glory to God was given before the exile. Before the house of Israel was taken into exile by Assyria. And before the house of Judah was taken into exile by Babylon, glory to God. Some prophets prophesied or their ministries, oh glory to God, were before the captivity of both Israel and Judah. While there are some, oh glory to God, prophets whose ministries was surfaced, oh glory to God, after the exile. So you call those post-exilic prophets. So those who had a ministry before, it means that they were the ones who were doing the warnings. They were the ones who were saying to the person's judgment is pending. You need to repent. They are referred to as pre-exilic prophets. Now, I said all of that because I want to categorize Amos for us since we're in the book of Amos. So Amos happened to be a pre-exilic prophet. And not only was he a pre-exilic prophet, but he was a prophet that was sent to prophesy to the house of Israel. Hallelujah. What did we say pre-exilic means? It means that before anybody or this particular house, Israel, was taken into captivity by the Assyrians, God sent this man to warn. But there is something interesting that I must point out, oh glory to God, as it relates to Amos. Let's look at verse 1. Verse 1 of Amos 1 reads thus. The words of Amos. Now, I want us to first highlight the word Amos, the name Amos. So we all know that names are very important in scripture. Now, the word Amos, it means burdened. Put that on the screen. Amos was one who was carrying a burden for God. Or God gave Amos his burden to carry during a specific time in history. So the word Amos itself is already telling us that this man of God or this individual was carrying the burden of God for his people. So Amos means burden. Now, who was among the herdsmen of Tekoa? Now, 
The second thing that we need to know about Amos, the first is that Amos was one who was carrying a burden during a certain time or specific time. But the second thing that we get to know about Amos is that the mere fact that the scripture says that he was among the herdsmen of Tekoa. Glory to God. It ought to make us know that Amos was actually a herdsman himself. We call them shepherds. And we're not talking about spiritual shepherds now like pastors. No. He was literally one who was tasked with the responsibility to take care of literal sheep. Whether he anointed them, fed them, watered them, whatever. He was a shepherd, oh glory to God, or a herdsman. Hallelujah. Which he saw concerning Israel. Or to tell us that this man saw visions of Israel. Okay. In the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Now, let us understand something. This particular prophet, Amos, is about to be used mightily by God, okay, to prophesy pending judgment, okay, to certain people. Not only is he going to be sent to Israel, but God is going to send him also to some of the enemies of Israel. And he's going to be prophesying. He's going to be speaking. Thus saith the Lord God. To these people. God would have raised him up. For a time. Such as this time. But something interesting. Is that. When Amos started to tell us. About himself. And we find that in Amos chapter 7. One of the things that he was keen to point out is that he was not a prophet. He said he was not even a son of the prophets. In other words, Amos was a simple, ordinary man like you and I. Okay? I see many people oftentimes, they, they become so anxious to have this title on their names. Oh, glory to God. Prophet this. Prophetess that. It is good to have titles. And it is good that when people have their titles, you give them the, the credence they deserve. If somebody is called Prophetess Mary, call her Prophetess Mary. Okay? Do not call her Mary. Because if she has been appointed prophet, call her what she really needs to be called. But I believe that there is this rush. Oh, glory to God. To the extent where people have been giving themselves their own titles. Glory to God. But here we are seeing that this one Amos, he has no title. This one Amos, he does not even have an affiliation. One would think that God will always use people who are affiliated with a certain group of people or people who fall in a certain group. Many of us, we have, glory to God, constructed our own groups and we are the ones recruiting people into our clan and our groups. But I can tell you this, I don't know about you, but as for Shadim, she refuses to be in anybody's clan. She refuses to seek acceptance from anybody who has their clique or their group. She doesn't wish to fit in or oh, glory to the almighty God. Now there were groups referred to as sons of the prophet during his time. We all know that the sons of the prophet were actually mentioned under the ministry of Elijah. Or rather Elisha. Glory to God. But emphasis is being made here by Amos. Amos says, I had no such affiliation. If you want to know who I am, I am here to tell you that I am nothing but a herdsman, okay? I am just a shepherd. When I get up in the mornings, I attend to my sheep. That's who I am. Yet this man, 
oh glory to God, I doubt, would have known, oh glory to God, the anointing or the weight thereof that God would have placed on the inside of him. Mighty God, many of us, oh glory to God, and many of you to whom I am speaking, you carry such great weight of anointing. Mighty God, you don't affiliate with them prophets because they don't see you as such. Well, we're speaking now in today's term and in today's context. Oh, glory to God. Many do not call you who you really are. You have been manifesting, but they, they don't really regard you because you're not up there. There are a certain set of people who are up there and because you're not up there. They don't respect you. They don't consider you. Even when there is need for you and need for your anointing, they, they don't care. They don't want you. Because you're not in the elite Rabo Sakandai category. Glory to God. Yet just like Amos, there are many of you out there who people underestimate, who people disregard, who people overlook all the time. Okay, yet your anointing is so up there, mighty God. Many of those who are a part of the sons of the prophet now, okay, when they speak to demons, demons don't move, demons don't respond, demons treat them even as they treated the sons of Sceva. Demons say, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? Oh, glory to God, but you. You don't have no title. You don't have no big name. You don't even have, oh glory to God, a set ministry to which you are assigned, oh glory to God. Yet when you open up your mouth, heaven moves, the earth shakes, demons scatter, oh glory to God, because of the weight of the anointing that God has placed on the inside of you. And so this insignificant one, called Amos, is about to be used in a powerful way. Tell somebody he's insignificant, but before God, he is great. To man, he's very small. To man, he's just a shepherd man, smelling like animals all day, smelling like sheep all day, looking ruddy or messed up all day. But before God, when God saw Amos, God saw his spokesman. God saw his mediator. God saw an oracle whom he would have appointed from in the realm of eternity. From before the foundations of the earth, he would have so chosen Amos. And from before the foundation of the earth, he would have so mandated the words that Amos would speak. So this was not an overnight decision now that was made by God. This was not a hurry come up decision or move that was made by God to choose him. This is something that was already ordained. Oh, glory to God. Before the foundation of the earth. Before he was formed in his mother's womb. Before he was born. Can somebody say hallelujah? I understand you, Shadi. Now. Verse 2 says, he said, the Lord will roar from Zion. Now, we said earlier that the Lord is about to use him in the area of prophesying judgment. And so everything that comes from his mouth after verse 1, okay, are now a part of the judgment prophecies that are being released by him on the behalf of God. Amos says, he says the Lord will roar. I don't know about you, but when I think of my enemies, and I'm talking about in the spirit now, our enemies, because our real enemies are in the spirit. Today, I just want to say to my enemies, that there is judgment that is pending. And I want to say to my enemies right now, even those monitoring spirits that have shown up, even those spies that have come to look and to watch, 
I'm about to give you news, you devils. I'm about to give you news, you demons. The Lord is about to roar, Rocco Sunday. I don't know about you, but you, you can always talk. You can always talk. But I hear the Lord saying that just as he did with Amos, that some of you are about to be, oh glory to God, stirred up, mobilized to prophesy judgment to your enemies. I say, you don't have to have a title. You don't have to sit in the front seat. Glory to God. You don't have to be up there. You just don't know what you're carrying, do you? I said, God says he's about to mobilize some people to prophesy to your enemies, to prophesy to those who have oppressed you, to prophesy to the enemies that have weighed you down, that have limited you, and that have showed up at all your job interviews, that have showed up every time you were supposed to get married, that have shown up every time you were supposed to pay your school fees or your child's school fees, were about to prophesy judgment because they have afflicted and oppressed us for too long. I say to the demons and devils right now, I say the Lord is about to roar. Begin to speak and prophesy to your enemies right now. I said, get up and start prophesying. We're not playing, come on. Don't get up if you're not serious. I wanna speak to some people who are already assuming a militant posture. You are prophesying, oh glory to God. You're not titled, but you know who you are. You know that you are a carrier of God's glory. You know that you are God's mouthpiece. You know that you carry the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost. You know that you walk in authority. You know who you are. Get up right now and begin to prophesy to your enemies that the Lord is about to roar on you. Oh, glory to God. Now, let's hear what he says. He says, the roaring will come from Zion. Do you know what Zion is? Now I want somebody to put this on the screen. Zion is the Lord's holy hill. Zion is the holy hill of the Lord. The holy hill of the Lord Zion is located in one city. And that is the city of Jerusalem. Meaning we're looking at this context now. The holy hill, okay, of Zion was actually a literal hill that existed in Israel, but it was specifically located in Jerusalem. And so not only did Amos say the word of the Lord or the roar from Zion, but he went on to say, and the Lord is uttering his voice from Jerusalem. Now, one of the things we must understand is the reason why Amos thought it necessary to let us know where the roaring is coming from. Oh my God, can somebody say revelation time? Now, at the time when Amos was actually prophesying, are you hearing me? Listen up. Worship, so-called worship, all kinds of worship were occurring all over the place. All over the place, okay? Worship was occurring in this city and that city. And we all know that during those days, God would have designated a specific place for worship. Okay? Where there was no contamination. A place that was treated as holy because he was holy. But by the time of this prophecy, worship was occurring in all kinds of cities. Because rebellious, stubborn, bitter man stiff-necked man, spiteful man, would have gone out to build up their own kind of church, their own kind of place of worship, and so all manner of evil worship. Listen, if it was not being done the way the Lord had asked for it to be done, and if it was not being done at the place or location where God had so asked for it to be done, it was an evil worship. It was a strange worship. It was not accepted by God. And so it was in those days. 
So being fully aware of the fact that the people, oh glory to God, in those days were practicing strange alien worship. And I'm sure when they built their strange alien altars, that many of them were calling on Yahweh. Do you see how bright and fiercely and presumptuous the enemy was and still is? So knowing that strange worship, strange altars, and strange places or temples were erected in those days, this man of God, even as he was inspired by God himself, he ensured to emphasize, okay, that the roaring, hallelujah, that is about to go out, the roar that is about to be heard, and the judgment that is about to come down, it is coming from one source, okay? It is coming from the true and living God, oh, glory to God. And so we're here to speak to those demons. We're saying to our enemies in the spirit, that we know that you know real from fake. We know that you know who has the anointing from who doesn't. We know that you know who has the seal of the Holy Ghost from who doesn't. We know that you know who has the blood mark of Jesus from who doesn't. Well, because we know that you know and we at the same time know who we are. When we prophesy to our enemies, we are prophesying from the oh, glory to God, the headquarters of the Holy Ghost. Today I say to you that the headquarters for the spirit of the living God is no longer glory to God, a physical place in Jerusalem, but it is right here in our temples because our temples and they belong to the Holy Ghost. And so even as we prophesy, we are making you know, devil, that this is an authentic prophecy that is going forth. It is coming from the throne of God himself. And so we who have been changed, and so we who have been sanctified, it is through us that we speak. You know when your fakers are speaking. When those you have raised up and have given your satanic anointing are speaking. When they speak, you laugh at them because they are yours and they are your friends. But because we are not friends with you, devil, we're not in any agreement with you, devil. We refuse to negotiate with you, devil. We refuse to compromise with you, devil. We hereby speak as oracles. And we prophesy to say, thus saith the almighty God, you enemies of Shedin, you enemies of Lisa, you enemies of Overcomer Javet, you enemies of Marvia, thus saith the Lord, a roar is about to come. And not only will my Lord roar, but judgment is about to come. And the kind of judgment that my God is about to bring on all those who have kept me in bondage, oh glory to God, it's a specific type of judgment. Tell somebody it is a judgment with fire. Tell somebody fire to the enemy oh glory to God it's a fire judgment a fiery judgment tell somebody it is a deadly kind of judgment tell somebody this judgment is not one to be played with tell somebody fire is about to be kindled and the fire of God is about to consume the fire of God is about to destroy Hallelujah. Now watch this. He continued to say in verse 3. Thus says the Lord. For three transgressions of Damascus. And for four. I will not turn away the punishment. Because they have threshed Gilead. Now. You see I love. I love to dissect the word. Do you like to hear the word dissected? Because I love to break it down. Tell somebody revelation time. Watch this. Did you hear the Lord just say for three transgressions and even four? Do you know what that means? 
It doesn't mean that God only found three transgressions and then at last minute he remembers that there was a fourth one. No, it doesn't mean that. God was simply trying to say to us, he was just using it in a poetic format, that what he found among the enemy, oh glory to God, was sin on top of sin on top of sin. In other words, the physical people that these spirits, the spirits of Satan would have used to cause our oppression. God says what he found among them was transgression, on top of transgression, on top of transgression. It just kept on going. It was ongoing. Okay? So all the people who have oppressed us, the, 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 the prophet went on to say, that the reason why God was about to pour out his wrath and God said, I refuse to withdraw this punishment. He said, because you threshed Gilead. I want us to understand what this means. You see that word threshed? Put that on the screen. I told you to put it on the screen earlier. That word threshed, it means to crush. I want somebody to put that on the screen. You see that word threshed? Okay. It is a term and a verb, actually, that speaks to what happens with the grains whenever there was grain or wheat harvest. They were crushed on a floor called the threshing floor. When God used the word threshed in this context, he's speaking of the great manner of cruelty with which his people were dealt with. Okay? And I tell you, you see, the enemy, oftentimes, he, he hurts us. And he does all manner of things against us. What he doesn't know is that the Lord has a day appointed to repay the evil that the enemy has done to us. I don't know who I'm talking to. There's somebody who's listening right now. You've been suffering a lot of bias in your workplace. There's a specific individual in your place of work through whom the enemy has been working and he's just been working and working and working through this person well i'm here to speak to you in the spirit of amos i'm encouraging you to begin to prophesy right now to the enemy behind that person that the lord is about to roar and he is roaring for the cruelty that you have caused in my place of work. He is roaring for the times you have obstructed me from getting my promotion. I said the cruelty has come up before the Lord. And thus saith the Lord my God. He's about to repay for every act of evil that have been performed against me. Oh glory to God. So the threshing speaks to great levels of cruelty on the part of the enemy god said the cruelty was carried out against gilead now what was gilead gilead was a city that rightfully belonged to israel in other words let me break it down because i love to break down the things Gilead was something that was not in Israel, but it belonged to Israel. It rightfully belonged to Israel. Israel, which represented the people of God. They had ownership of Gilead. Gilead was their possession. Oh, come on, people of God. I don't know about you, but I know that the enemy has tried and I'm sure is still trying to deal with cruelty, something that rightfully belongs to me. It might not be something that is here or can be housed or hold in my house. It might not be small enough to be contained in here, but my name is on it. God has given it to me. It rightfully belongs to me. And even though I'm not there to give it oversight day in and day out, it is mine. It is mine. Yet because I don't have the power to see things always and to be everywhere present, because I am not ubiquitous as God is, 
I thank God that he fills in where I fall short. Because when I am not seeing the cruelty, I'm feeling it and I'm understanding it. But sometimes you're not seeing everything you need to see. God sees it all. Because his word says his eyes move to and fro upon the earth. Watching the evil and the good. So I don't know whose Gilead is being threshed by the enemy. Damascus is guilty. I don't know who your Damascus is. But God has a charge against your Damascus. Because they're trying to rob you of that land. They're trying to rob you of that house. They're trying to rob you of that car. They're trying to steal. They're trying to take. But I'm here to say to your Damascus that God has seen your works. And he's even laughing because he knows your day, Damascus, is coming. Damascus, hear ye the word of the Lord. God is about to repay you for your evil. Thus saith God. A roar is going out. Thus saith God. He will not withhold judgment. Thus saith God. He's about to repay. Not with water. Not with wind. But with fire. Oh glory to God. Tell them fire to the enemy. Watch this. But I will send a fire. Verse 5. Into the house of Hazael, which shall devour the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Now, listen up, because we are dissecting the word now. Watch this. When God says, I'm going to send a fire, okay, he's not speaking of what we know as a flame of fire. It is literally a phrase that speaks of judgment. In other words, many of us, we have oftentimes seen fire in our dreams. When you see fire in your dreams, it ought not to be taken or interpreted literally. Fire speaks to the Lord's judgment. So God was saying through Amos that I'm about to judge, which we would have established a few seconds ago. But here's the thing. God says... He's about to pour out the fire on the house of Hazael. Who is Hazael? Hazael was king. Tell somebody Hazael was king. And if Hazael was king, and we know that kings are usually at the top of the hierarchy, then it sounds to me like the judgment of the Lord is about to start from the top all the way down to the bottom. I love it when you do it that way, my God. I love it when you unseat those who are way up there who think that they cannot be moved. I love it, God. I say God starts from the top and he will work his way down through judgment to the bottom. Tell somebody, God, I like it when you do it that way. Now watch this. Not only did God mention that the judgment was going to affect or impact Hazael, who was the king. But because he is a God who is not afraid of nobody, okay? He's God all by himself. He doesn't need man's approval, okay? When he decides to move, he moves. When he decides to speak, he speaks. Tell somebody that's why he's called Almighty God, All-Powerful God. God says, I'm not only going to pour out my wrath upon you, you Hazael. And I'm speaking now and prophesying in the spirit of Amos to my Hazael's. Yes, my Hazael's who are listening in the spirit. My Hazael's, I am prophesying judgment to you. God went on even further. To say, he is going to devour all the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Do you know who Ben-Hadad is or was? Ben-Hadad was the son of the king. Ben-Hadad was prince. Okay, so let's think about it real quick. So he starts judgment and he highlighted king. And then I see him going down to prince. And we all know that 
princes are usually the children of the kings. So are you saying, God, that because of my trouble, see, because you want to give me back double, and because you're about to, mighty God, judge everything that has afflicted me, that has robbed me of my future, robbed me of my joy, robbed me of my peace, you're telling me that you're carrying out a generational massacre. Lord, everybody, you're wiping out everybody. You're wiping out father. You're wiping out son. And so even now in the spirit realm, we prophesy not just to the kings who are at the top of the hierarchy, but we say to you, devil, your entire family, the entire monarchy, is about to be wiped out by the judgment of God through fire of oh, glory to God. Tell somebody fire to the enemy. Sons of God, where are you? Are you arising? I say sons of God, are you ready to arise? Because God is about to send fire to our enemies. I said the entire family is being wiped out in the spirit. I said the entire clique is being wiped out in the spirit. Oh, you don't hear me. I said mother demon is being wiped out. Papa demon is being wiped out. Pitney demon is being slaughtered. I said fire to the entire household in the spirit. In Jesus name. After you devil have robbed me for so long. You have stolen from me for so long. Huh? You think that when my God judges and he's ready to repay, that he's going to give you some kind of pian, pian, mediocre repayment? How dare you, devil? How dare you? My God is about to recompense for the tears that I have shed. My God is about to recompense for the many times that you've made me look stupid on the job and in front of my own family. I said, God is about to judge for all those times I've been mocked because of you. I don't know about you, but I am speaking. If you want to be quiet, then fine. But as I go along, you have the opportunity to take a stance and to speak. We are prophesying. God said to Ezekiel, he said, son of man, prophesy to these dry bones. And I am here to prophesy to my enemies. Because you think enemies, you thought you were going to have a feast day all day long. All day long it was going to be jubilation and rejoicing, clapping, singing and shouting and dancing. You've made a sad mistake. Devil, I'm here to tell you, okay, that your rejoicing is about to turn into mourning. I don't know about you, but you can always prophesy. I told you that many of you, you are not recognized as a prophet. You are not recognized as a spokesperson of God in your ministry or in your place of worship. But you know that you carry the weight of the glory of God inside of you. You know that you carry an anointing. And when you speak the thing, it manifests. Some of you, you already know. Many people say you have goat mouth in Jamaica. It's not goat mouth that you have. What you have is a prophetic anointing. And so whatever you speak, God acknowledges it. And hence the reason it manifests. Many of you, you might not be all there in the spirit, speaking in tongues and carrying on. But you know that you have a so-called goat mouth. Well, I'm, a, I'm here to correct that. You are the Lord's spokesperson. Okay? And hence, whatever you speak, he watches over it. He performs it. You carry the weight of the anointing. And so now is an opportune time for you to use that mouth of yours to prophesy the thing that you wish to see, the thing you desire to see manifest amongst your enemies. I don't know about you, but I feel as though my enemies have robbed me enough. I feel as though he has robbed me of many years. Throughout those years, he caused me to be sad. 
He caused me to shed tears. He caused me to feel neglected. He caused me to be in isolation. He caused my relationships with others to fail. And so I am here to prophesy judgment by fire upon those enemies. In Jesus' mighty name. So you get the chance to prophesy also to your enemies. Just speak into your atmosphere and say, Today I, I stand in the spirit of Amos. And I prophesy judgment. Hallelujah. Tell somebody it's a judgment by fire. Now watch this. In verse 5. So God says he's going to destroy the palaces. And so I'm here to speak over my atmosphere. And I'm saying that place that houses those demons that torment me. I say I prophesy the judgment of the Lord is going to come to that place of shelter. Wherever those demons live, wherever they reside, I say, judgment is going to come to your place of shelter. You demonic spirits, you evil powers, I speak to you now, I prophesy to you. That that place where you found comfort, that place to which you go after you torment me, that judgment is going to come to it in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord continued to say, I will break also the bar of Damascus. Do you know what the bar of Damascus is? The bar that is being spoken of here, it speaks to the gate, the gate of Damascus. Which city, okay, is the Lord prophesying to? Damascus. Here comes the servant of the Lord, the messenger of the Lord Amos. He says, I am not even just gonna cause judgment to come to your palace, but I'm gonna send my fire to your gate do you know what that means okay let me break it down tell somebody dissecting the word what what does your gate represent let's talk now some of you as i break this down you will get the understanding of a dream that you had recently i like to make the what you call it correlation between scriptural meanings and your dreams because the interpretation thereof of your dreams it comes from scripture all right so listen up to all those people who have seen gates in their dreams of late as we break down this particular verse god says he's gonna destroy the bar of damascus the bar of damascus is simply speaking to the gate of damascus what do gates represent what is the purpose of gates in general okay so in its simplest term gates for example there's a gate at my house or around my yard the gate it serves as a place that opens and closes to those who reside in here it serves to be that place that does some kind of filtering it filters what comes in and what goes out because except we go through the gate there is no going in and there's no coming out so the gate is almost like a place of filtering but not only that it is also it, it plays a key role in terms of the security of the place because should somebody who is evil come through the gate then there is a security breach and so when you talk about gates you talk about protection you talk about security when God says I'm about to pour out my wrath upon the bar of Damascus God means that I'm about to strip you of your protection you people of Damascus who have tormented my children in other words those demons that have come at your house at night that have crept up in your bed those demons that have caused your child to be stiffened out to be having epilepsy attacks frotting and all those things those demons God says in my judgment I'm gonna strip them of their satanic protection I'm going to strip them of their satanic anointing. Whatever it is that has empowered them spiritually. Whatever it is that has given them the drive to affect you and attack you. God says, I'm going to strip them of it. I'm going to pull it off of them. I'm going to bring them down to nothing, saith God. And so all those demons that have been coming around me and my children... Oh, glory to God. I hear God saying, recompense. That he's about to repay 
for the sleepless nights I have had. Because that thing that has been used to protect you, you demons, remember now, we're speaking to those demons now. We're prophesying to them. The devil has empowered them with weapons. The devil has given them some kind of artillery from which they can pick whatever weapons or instruments they want to use. The devil has equipped them. The devil has anointed them. See, in the same way that we Christians are anointed, there is demonic anointing. Do you know what anointing is? I've said this before and I will just reiterate what anointing means. Anointing is simply defined as this, supernatural empowerment. Did you hear that? Supernatural empowerment. So in the same way that supernatural empowerment can be accessed by a true born again believer, supernatural empowerment can be had or experienced by people who are not true believers. Okay? And so demons have been given anointings by Satan. And he gives them certain anointings to do different things. It is the anointing of Satan that causes a demon to be able to be changed into a lizard and then a rat and then a dog. That is a satanic empowerment. Okay? And many of the demons that come to us to afflict us, some have been touching our heads. And as a result, there is some kind of movement occurring in our heads. Some have been afflicted in the neck. And so there's this big bulge in the neck because demons have been anointed and been given specific anointing to afflict certain areas of our bodies. But today we prophesy in the spirit of Amos. Where are the people who are becoming militant right now because you're sick and tired? I say we are putting expiration dates to those demonic powers and elements in the name of Jesus Christ. We say we prophesy to you, you evil spirits, that your gates shall fall, that your protection shall be written away. God is about to take, God is about to remove, God is about to destroy, for you have touched the Lord's anointed. You have committed a breach. The word of God says, touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophet no harm and so anything that has passed its place to touch you to afflict you to cause you pain to cause you agony those things are guilty of carrying out a breach tell somebody those things have committed a breach and anything that has committed a breach it deserves punishment anybody agrees god says touch not my anointed and do not do anything to my prophet. That is a command that was sent by Elohim. That is a command that was sent out by Yeshua. And more so, El Elyon, the most high God. Now, for the enemy to afflict. For the enemy to cause cruelty in our lives. It means he would have breached, committed a breach. And so for all the demons and demonic spirits assigned to us that have committed a breach, we prophesy judgment to you. We say a fire shall be kindled upon you. We say a fire shall devour you. We say a fire shall eat up, oh glory to God, your head, your tail shall be no more. I say fire shall go out and locate you in the spirit. Oh glory to the almighty God. They have committed a breach. How dare you? How dare you stretch out your hands against the Lord's anointed? Who remember that conversation that David had? David said, were you not afraid? See, this guy carried out. A treacherous act. As a matter of fact, he didn't even do it. He was lying. Because he thought he was going to get some kind of praise and honor for telling David that he's the one who killed this great person. I believe Saul. So David said, were you not afraid to stretch out your hands against the Lord's anointed? Well, today I'm asking those evil spirits. Those monitoring spirits, those devils, those powers, those dominions, those mites that have been assigned to me, to my family, to those who belong to me, to you. 
I'm asking them, were you not afraid, you demons? Were you not afraid to stretch out your hands to the Lord's anointed? How dare you? And because you have been so presumptuous to touch the Lord's anointed, then judgment shall be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. How dare you, you evil spirit? You see, this is the kind of stance that the believers ought to take in spirit. For too long we have been fighting battles that are going nowhere. Or let's put it this way. We are fighting the battles ineffectively. Effective fighting of battles occur in the spirit. Where we utilize our physical man, our bodies. But instead of blowing punches... Instead of kicking and boxing, what we're doing is we're fighting with our tongues in the spirit. It is time for us to become aggressors in the spirit. We need to become spiritually aggressive. If some of you were to take on the same kind of aggression with which some of you and even the men, oh glory to God, who have an abusive type tendency, if you were to use that aggression that you use toward your wife, children, and friends, if you were to use it toward the enemy, then today the church, the body of Christ, would have been so triumphant. Glory to God. I hear God saying that many of you, you need to take on an aggressive posture in the spirit. Listen to me. Listen up. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm one of those persons, I might have said this before, I can't really uh, pray softly. You know, to pray softly, I'd have to train myself to do same. I don't know what it means to pray softly. To be honest, I have to try really hard to pray softly. And the truth is, it's not like my loud praying is gonna make or be any more effective than if I pray softly. The, the truth is, it's really a, a difference in terms of my pitch. And, and pitch doesn't really move the enemy. What moves the enemy is our authority. So loud speaking and loud praying really, but, but I'm just saying to you, I, I, I can't pray softly, okay? But when I do pray, something I notice is that whenever I go to war, mighty God, my entire body, I said my entire being becomes involved. You see, when you go to war, Forget about pretty looks. Forget about beauty. Forget about looking good. There's no look good on the battlefield. There's no looking dainty on the battlefield. Okay? Expect yourself to look ugly. Oh, glory to God. Because when you go to war, you ought to become so aggressive on the battlefield that your demeanor changes. That the devil sees the God in you. He doesn't even see you. What he sees is the Holy Ghost standing on the inside of you. When I go to Sirius War, people of God, I have to restrain myself at times. Because if I were to go to war every day, come on, it's impractical. Because guess what? It would be utilizing too much of my energy. Because I know that when I go on the battlefield, it is all of me that is fighting. What did I say? I said all of me. My eyes are fighting, my ears are fighting, my hands are fighting, my fingers are fighting, my belly, my back, every part of me is fighting. How about you? Blessed be the Lord God who has taught, oh glory to God, my hands to fight, my fingers to war. And if you want to say it the other way around, it doesn't matter. But blessed be the Lord who has empowered us to run through troops and to leap over walls. Blessed be the Lord. And so when we talk about judgment, okay, we strip our enemies of their protection. Whatever it is that has given them confidence to afflict us, whatever it is that has caused them to be so bold, you know the enemy is bold because you hear it through the people he's using. Sometimes the enemy makes some presumptuous statement now. How dare you, devil? You hear it. Presumptuous speaking. How dare you, devil? And so when we talk about prophesying the judgment of God upon the gates of our enemies, we're talking about stripping him 
of his protection, of everything that gives him confidence, of everything that empowers him, of everything that gives him strength. Can somebody say, I understand you, Shadid. Oh, glory to God. Now, watch this. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them to Edom. Now, just like he did with Damascus, God says, I'm going to send a fire on Gaza. Gaza was referring to the five cities of the Philistines. Okay, so it is a region that is called Gaza. God says, I'm going to send a fire on Gaza. I don't know what your Gaza is, but God says, because Gaza has been a snare to you, because Gaza has been an adversary to you, because Gaza has caused you pain, because Gaza has robbed you of your joy and peace. God said, I'm going to send a fire to Gaza in Jesus' name. Now watch this. I want to jump to verse 9. Nas, can you tell me what time it is? 841. Okay. Look at verse 9. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions, I love this one, of Tyrus, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom, and remembered not that brotherly covenant. Now, tell somebody, revelation time. I don't hear you. Who, who knows what... Edom is. So Edom is actually the name of a city. But how did Edom arrive at its name? So let's break it down now. Edom is actually a der derivative from Esau. Who remembers who Esau was? Esau was actually the brother of Jacob. Okay? Edom is Esau. Esau brought forth the city of Edom or produced Edom okay now God says okay the judgment that I'm about to cause right now the reason for this specific judgment that I'm about to carry out is because Edom has fought against his brother who was the brother of Esau again Jacob and who is Jacob again Israel so in other words Edom and Israel are brothers because Esau and Jacob were brothers so God says this particular punishment that is about to come forth is because there was a breach where the brotherly covenant is concerned and the Lord went on to state, or to be more specific, he spoke about the many times the enemy would have caused the bo both brothers to be at, glory to God, war with each other. So God says, okay, because there was no brotherly love, and because I didn't see the law or concept that talks about one being his brother's keeper, manifesting that I'm about to pour out my wrath. God says, I said, Lord, what does that have to do with us today? I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that when he looks in certain families, in certain households, the enemy has caused some of your siblings to be fighting against you. Siblings and siblings are at war. Siblings and siblings are not talking for months now. Siblings and siblings are not in agreement. They never agree. Siblings and siblings are quarreling over the phone. They're having face-to-face -face quarrels. Siblings and siblings are carrying each other to the court. Okay, so you guys are at it. Okay? And you're thinking that the, the battle... It just lies in the flesh. And so both of you, you are out to kill each other. But what about the demons and the spirits that are responsible? I hear God saying that because he has seen the injustice and he has seen, oh glory to God, the evil that is in sometimes one of the siblings heart. Because sometimes it's only that one person. 
is the cause of the dispute and the, the rupture in the family. But sometimes God says the wickedness and the evil is in both of your hearts. God says it's about time if you are in a family and you know that there are sibling disputes. Sister and sister are at it. Brother and sister are at it. Brother and brother are at it. Family and family are at it. God says there is a spirit that is responsible for it. And he says because he has seen the kind of rupture that is has caused in the family. He has seen how it has affected and impacted every area of the family. God says he's about to pour out his wrath. He's about to cause, oh glory to God, judgment by fire to those demonic spirits that are responsible. They're responsible for causing disruptions in the family. Because when two people are not talking, they're not in agreement, it causes a ripple effect. Because all of a sudden, Auntie starts to take sides with this one. Mother takes sides with this one. And so it has a ripple effect. And because of the presence of these demonic spirits that have been causing disagreements and disharmony in families, okay? Many families, they lack peace. Many families, they don't know what it means to have a family reunion because nobody's united. Everybody's scattered all over. Some are west, some east, some north, and they're not communicating, they're not talking. God says there is a demonic spirit that is at the root of it, and he needs to be confronted. And I'm here to tell those demonic spirits, if they're in my family, I'm here to tell you that you have caused disagreement for far too long. You have caused war, bitterness, unforgiveness, malice, or glory to God for far too long. And so I'm here in the spirit of Amos to prophesy judgment to you that my God is about to kindle a fire upon you. Can somebody say fire to the enemy? Fire to the enemy that causes war in my bloodline. Fire to the enemy that causes war between my cousins. Fire to the enemy that causes war amongst my sisters and brothers. Fire to the enemy. I don't know, but God says many of you, you know what I'm talking about because it's happening in your families right now. Brother and brother are not talking. And sisters and brothers are not talking. But the one that, if, that is even most prevalent, he says, are sisters and sisters who are not talking. Bigger sister not talking to smaller sister. Okay? And sister on father's side not talking to sister. Oh, Jesus. It is just confusion. I say right now, we prophesy to those demonic spirits that are responsible. We bind you up with chains and fetters of fire. And we say, thus saith God, fire shall be on your head. Fire shall be on your feet. Fire Fire shall devour you. Fire shall be a breakfast. Fire shall be a lunch. Fire shall be a dinner. I say fire shall be a medicine in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, glory to God. And so even now, even as I'm on this note, I want to do an altar call. I don't think I've ever done an, an, an altar call for this. I want... Every person in whose families are the Esau versus Israel dispute. Okay? Brother and brother dispute. Sister and sister dispute. Brother and sister dispute. Listen to me. When I said that just now, the Lord allowed me to hear the heart of somebody. There's somebody who this very thing is happening in your midst. But when I said it, you hissed your teeth in your heart. You're like, you, you know who you are. Because when I just pointed it out, God pricked you. Because I heard what you did in your heart. Who remembers when God was speaking on the outside of the house of Abram and Sarai? And God said, your wife, she's going to have a child by next year this time. And she laughed. And God said, why did you laugh? She tried to lie to the Holy Spirit. There is somebody, you just did that. Get up because it is for you. You're going to get the breakthrough in your obedience. Get up from where you are. So if you're seated 
on a couch, get up. If you're seated or slouching in bed, get up. Whatever you are doing, I want you to change your posture. Symbolizing your act of faith to get this divine breakthrough and change in your family and in your bloodline. I want you to step forward to the front because this is what it is all about. Every night God tries to meet the needs of different categories of people. You thought that this area of your life was forgotten by God, but God says no. I've seen it and I remember it always. And today he has come to address it. Hallelujah. The mother and daughter disputes where daughter is, she's not talking to mother. You too, you need to come. Our mothers are not talking to children. Children refuse to talk to their fathers. I want all of you to come. Yes, I see persons getting up. All you need to do is to take two steps further than where you were before. So when you get up, you take two steps and you stand right there. You're coming to the altar because you want divine intervention. You're coming to the altar because you're sick and tired. You know the ripple effect that this thing has had on you and even your own children. You know the consequences that you have had to suffer because of the imbalance in your family, the instability in your family. And so you want God to do something and you want him to do it now. I want you to come to the front. You're not coming to the front because somebody is forcing you. And you're not coming to the front just because there is an outer call to come to the front. You're coming to the front because your soul is crying out to God. Your spirit is saying, God, I need your help and I need you right now. That's why you are coming to the front. I'm not asking you, but I'm telling you that in many households in Jamaica and some of you who are listening from the diaspora, you know what I'm talking about. It's been years since you last spoke to your sister. It's been years since you last spoke to your brother. Now, what is even worse is for some of you, it's been years since you last even saw your own mother. I want you to come. There are some people who are already crying, saith the Lord. Something is beginning to break. Some of you, the reason why there is a dispute is because somebody told lies on you. Somebody, oh glory to God, has accused you. Somebody has called you the black sheep and they've used words that were very painful in your soul. The reason why, oh glory to God, there is a dispute is because one thinks he or she is better than the other or better than the others. Some are of a lighter complexion and because the others are dark skinned, they treat them worse than anybody else. I want you to come. Whatever the cause of the disunity is, whatever the cause of the disharmony is, God does not care for the cause. He wants you to come. You need to be healed. And even in the healing process, I hear God saying, he will do mending. He'll do mending. There are many times the thought of breaking the silence have come to you. Where you are tempted to pick up the phone and to call that person. And sure enough, it's not a case where you don't have the person's number. Because even if the person's number is not in your phone or in your contacts right now, you know how to access the person's information. But today is the day when you're saying, God, I want the courage. And not only the courage, but I hear God saying there is a level of pride that needs to be addressed. As long as the pride is there, that thing will always remain. As long as the pride is there, nobody will see the need to say, I am sorry. And nobody will want to be the first to make that call. Because everybody is trying to outdo or outlast everybody else. And that cannot work in the kingdom. I hear God saying that when you are small, when you become small, then in his eyes you are great. Where are the great people? Yes, small people, they allow themselves to be belittled. Small people, they allow themselves to be mocked. Small people allow themselves to look stupid. Small people allow themselves to be pointed out and to seem weak. It's okay, because though you're weak, you are strong. It is okay, because when you're weakest, 
God says that's when his strength will be perfected in you. Come to the altar. Lift up your hands. And as your hands are lifted up, I, Shadeen Anglin, a servant of the Most High God, one whom you would have sent, Lord, to make this appeal to the people who are struggling in this area. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, because many of you have been carrying the weight of unforgiveness in this matter, in your hearts, it has impacted other things, other areas in your lives, and you just don't know it. It has impacted even your financial reality. It has impacted because the unforgiveness has been causing things to be deterred from you instead of coming to you. And today I am appealing to you to let it go. As your hands are lifted, I want the people who are at the altar to say, Break it, Lord, break it. Break it, Lord, break it. Break the cords, break it. Break the chains, break it. Break it, Rebo Sukandarabosha. Yakondai, every snake, every cobra, every lizard, every leviathan that has played a part, that has a role in this. I say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we kindle a fire against you. We bind you up now. I say we cut off your claws. We cut off your tentacles. We cut off your tails. And we commit right now. These individuals into the hands of the almighty God. We take them out of your hands. We pull them out of your sneer. We fly every bird trap. And we say today is a day of liberty. Today is a day when they will experience prison break. Come out. Let it go. Let it go. Go, 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 go. Now, go. Every pain begin to go. Every hurt begin to go. I say go. I say go. Rama Shukanda. There is a lady. Looks like you're wearing a shirt. Whitish color shirt. And a, a shorts. Lift up your hands. It's okay. Ramosha, let it go. Rebobosha, let them go because they knew not what they were doing. They laughed at you. They spoke all manner of evil against you. But you got to forgive them. You got to forgive them because you don't want to be like some kind of termite. You don't want the unforgiveness to be like termite on the inside of you. Come on, release them. Release them. Let them go. Let them go because they didn't understand. Let them go because they had not a clue what they were doing when they were lying at you. They have not a clue. And if you don't let them go and pray for them then they're gonna go to the place where you don't want to be yourself uh, let them go let them go release in the name of jesus release say lord i forgive and call their names i forgive you i forgive you and i'm gonna call you i will call you I will break the silence. I say I will break the silence. As I speak, the Holy Spirit is ministering to you people who are at the altar. It is something that you know is long overdue. God has been speaking to you for a while about breaking this silence. It's been a while now since he's been saying, call her or call him or go to her or go to him. So you know that this is confirmation now. I say break right now. Break, break, break. In the name of Jesus, the yoke break right now. I release an apostolic anointing to break the chain responsible, to break the cords responsible, to break the yokes responsible. I said break now, break in Jesus' mighty name, break. Tell somebody it's time to break. We break by fire. Even as the Lord is judging by fire, we break by fire. The powers at work, we break by fire. The instruments, the equipment, the things the enemy has been using. I say we break right now. And if you are not the person who's directly involved in the dispute, I want you to stand in the gap and begin to point out 
even with your tongues, with your mouths, point out the different relationships that needs divine intervention in your family. You see the Esau versus Israel kind of thing, Edom versus Israel thing at work. And you're sick and tired of it because they don't know it, that it's affecting you. And you're tired of picking sides and you're tired of having to go all around the world just to get some information to certain of them because because some of them have stopped trusting you and you have nothing to do with it. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, even in those situations, in my family and in the families of those people who are at the altar, as a matter of fact, can the people who are at the altar just for two seconds, just put at the altar, just put it on the screen. I want to have an idea how many people are at the altar right now. I say, Lord God, even as I stand in the gap as your intercessor, as your spokesperson, even as I make representation for your people guided by the Holy Ghost, I ask you for you to intervene speedily. I say this is an urgent call. This is an urgent appeal for you to turn around those situations, for you to cleanse those families of all contamination caused through unforgiveness, through malice, through bitterness, through cousin and cousin not talking, sister and sister not talking, uncle and nephew not talking, father and daughter not talking, father and son. I say every contaminant in families that are of that nature, we uproot you now in Jesus' mighty name. We ask you out now in the name of Jesus. We call you out and we raise up godly standards against you. We say your time has come to an end. You shall no longer flourish in our families. You shall no longer prosper in our families. I say you shall no longer have any power or any dominion to Im impact or to afflict any member of the bloodline anymore in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so for all the people who are at the altar, I'd love to know what is happening. I feel like there is something that is happening. Are there any persons at the altar who are belching? You're belching. You're belching. Some people are belching. Some people are yawning. Let it go. As you say, I release so-and-so. You're getting your deliverance, but it's manifesting. I hear belches and I hear yawns. Who are the people yawning and belching, yawning and belching at the altar? Release them in the name of Jesus. And as you release them, there is a sense of freedom that is coming to your spirit. As you release them, you're feeling as though a burden is being lifted. Yes, Lord, do it for them, not by might. Do it for them. It cannot be done by power. I cannot do it. You cannot do it yourself. But the Holy Spirit, the one, oh glory to God, who has been sent to help you, to be your comforter, to be your teacher, to be your instructor. He's the one doing it for you and he's doing it right now. Release those people, release, release, release in the name of Jesus. It's about time you release and you're releasing them completely to the extent where when we're finished with this broadcast, even as early as tomorrow morning is, some of you, you need to pick up that phone and start calling that person whom you haven't spoken to in a while. You need to pick up that phone and break the silence between you and your parents. You need to talk. You need to talk. I want Al. Can I get that phone? Nax, can you tell me? Erica says she's belching. Deliverance is taking place. Who else is belching and what's the other one? Yawning. I heard belching and yawning. I see you, Jessica. You're yawning. Shane, you are yawning. Simone, you are belching. Amazing. Glory to God. Veron, you're yawning. There are many persons who are yawning and belching at the altar because something is leaving your spirit as you obey the voice of God. You never had to come to the altar. See, there are some people who are still being stubborn in their ways. They're still seated. They haven't moved and they know that the issue is in their bloodlines. The issue is in their families. But for those people who have obeyed the voice of the Holy Ghost, not my voice, I have nothing to do with it. I'm not even the one talking to you right now. You have obeyed the voice of God. And God is about to meet you at the pinnacle, not just of your obedience, but at the pinnacle of your faith. Because it takes faith to step forward. It takes faith to say there is a problem in my bloodline that needs to be addressed. It takes faith. Laura, I see you. You're yawning. Donnett, you're yawning. 
And so, Father God, as your people's bodies become free and relieved of the spirits of unforgiveness, of the spirits of unkindness, bitterness, and all of those things, I pray that you'll fill them. Can somebody at the altar say, fill me, Lord. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your fire. Somebody say, fill me, Lord, fill me. There is an anointing right now that is flowing in the atmospheres of those who are at the altar. Do not allow the enemy to distract you in this hour. Now is not the time to respond to your WhatsApp messages. Now is not the time to respond to the text. Now is not the time to take the phone call unless it is an emergency. Now is between you and God. I hear some people, God says you need the infilling of the Holy Ghost. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, as you go forward, forgiving will become easier. As you go forward, loving on others and praying for them will be made easier. Because it takes having the Holy Ghost on the inside of you to do this. And so, Father, as your people are asking for you to fill, I ask that you will carry out your word, even as you said, he who hungers and thirsts for righteousness, he will be filled. Let there be an infilling of your glory. Let there be an infilling of your power. Let there be an infilling of your anointing. Let there be an infilling right now as they ask. As they desire it, grant it unto them. I say, God, empty them now. There's somebody who is vomiting right now. Who are you? There's somebody vomiting right now. Who are you? I love to see Nats, can I get the phone? Did you give it to me? Somebody's vomiting. I want to see who's vomiting. I saw somebody throw up something just now. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah to your holy, mighty, marvelous name. Nats, I want you to look to see who that person is. Alberta, you're yawning, you're belching, and your nose is running. It's okay. Rabababo Shanda. Neko tarabo sanai. I say healing in the name of Jesus. I say break every chain now. Loose in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come up and out every bitterness. Come up and out every hate. I say come up and out in the name of Jesus. Your time in those vessels is up. Your time is up. I say your time is up in the name of Jesus Christ. Say fill me Lord. Fill me. Fill me with your fire. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your anointing. Where are the people who need to give their hearts to the Lord? You've never given your heart to Jesus before. But today you've been arrested by the word. I want you. Good. Arlene, you're the one vomiting. Awesome. I see it. Arlene, I command everything that is inside of you that is not of God to go. Thank you for taking the time to tell me that you're the one. Because I saw somebody vomiting. And so everything inside of you that has entered your life because of the situation so the rejection come out now come out of her now in the name of jesus i speak to the rejection come out in jesus mighty name i say i speak to every limitation that has come to your life because of the situation and everything that has associated you with things and people you have nothing to do with right now everything that has misunderstood and misinterpreted you Loose now, loose, come out of her now. Everything up and out from the root, come out now, get out. Every limitation, get out now. Every sickness, generationally inherited and otherwise, come out now in Jesus' name. Up, up, up and out, out of her now in Jesus' mighty name. Those people who want to accept Jesus, come to the front. Those people who have gotten your deliverance and are getting your deliverance, I want you to kind of step back so that people who need Jesus can come in front of you. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, I surrender all tonight. Father, I confess that Jesus Christ, he is indeed your son. He died for me so I might live and have life more abundantly. I am sorry for the many times I've cursed you, for the many times I didn't trust you, for the many times I have doubted you, I am sorry, Lord. For all the wrongs I have done in my life, I repent. Forgive me of my trespasses. Cleanse me of my unrighteousness. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit on the inside of me. 
I want to be a vessel of honor, not of dishonor. I choose to be used by you. I choose to represent you. I need you, Lord. If there was ever a time that I needed you, God, I need you now. I'm tired of trusting human beings with my life. I'm tired of trusting them with my secrets. All they've done was to just fail me. I thought they were my confidants, but they failed me. They betrayed me. But today, I want to entrust my secrets with you. I want to entrust my life with you. I want to entrust my strength, my confidence, my future with you. I decree and I declare that as of this moment, as of this hour, as of this minute and second, that Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, He's now Savior of my life. Old things are passed away. Everything that I've ever done that was wrong and the old me, as far as I'm concerned, are no more. My book is clear. My records is clear. It's a new page. It's a new season. It's a new me. And if you've just said that prayer and you believed in your heart as you prayed, we just want to say welcome to the kingdom. Congratulations. You have just made one of the best decisions you could have ever made in your entire life. Thank you for coming over. Thank you for choosing Jesus. We're happy to have you. And as I always say, we don't promise that the ride is going to be smooth sailing, easy and comfortable all the time. But what we do promise is that the Lord's grace will be and shall be sufficient for you. Indeed, you will have somebody in your corner. I will be here for you. I might not be available all the time, but I know I will make myself, I'll try to make myself available for you. Thank you for coming to Jesus. And are there any backsliders who want to come back home? You want to come back into the flock? Just say this prayer, Lord, I give up. I come to you today. I come back home. I choose you again. Cleanse me of all contaminants. Cleanse me. Cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse my spirit, my soul, my heart, my mind. Renew a right spirit in me. And if you have come back, welcome back home. God is gathering his flock. And a joke time now. It's gathering of flock time now. It's gathering of sheep time now. It's not time for farm fool. Now is not the time for it. A serious time now. And so you have made a good choice to come back into the sheepfold. Hallelujah. Can I see the people who are watching the broadcast from outside of Jamaica? Can I see you? I'd love for you to just indicate the country where you're watching from real quick. Can you put that on the screen real quickly so that I can recognize you or recognize your country? Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the meantime, can somebody say fire to the enemy? Tell somebody fire to the enemy. I don't know about you, but I see that there's fire in my enemy's camp right now. There's fire burning in my enemy's camp right now. My enemy is having a nervous breakdown right now. I say fire to the enemy in the name of Jesus. I want to welcome you people. Welcome to um, Candy Girl. She's from New York. I see Florida is in the building. Welcome. Welcome to persons watching from Guyana. God bless you as well. I see you, Maureen. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to persons watching from Connecticut. Welcome. Welcome to Jessica, who's watching all the way from Dubai. I really hope that you will come back to hear the word of the Lord. Now, I want you to make a note that we meet again tomorrow at 11. I'm wondering if I should start at 10. Okay, now listen up. I'm going to start tomorrow's prayer, God's willing, at 10. But do indicate by turning on your notification so that you can be notified when I'm live. I will be praying for the sick, whatever the issues are. I'll be praying for the people with the sinuses, the asthma, <clears throat> the womb issues, the cervical issues, the lungs issue, the throat issues, the digestion issues, the acid reflux, the brain issue, the head issue, the back issue, the foot issue, the belly issue, the eye issues. Whatever the illnesses are, tomorrow I will be praying for the sick in the morning. Please to turn on your notification. I will be targeting 10 a.m. Jamaican time. So please look out. Okay, get all the people who need healing. We know God usually shows up. To be honest with you, I could have shown you many things, but I guess 
many persons don't have the stomach to see some of the things okay persons have been carrying up some things it's not funny I just can't put them on Facebook because not everybody has the guts to, to deal with the sight of some of these things. So God is doing something. When you come tomorrow, all I want you to do is to carry your faith. Also, if you have not yet gone over to my YouTube channel, I want you to go there. There's a link above. Subscribe to my channel and look at the sermons that are there. And if you are a woman with fibroid issues, we will be praying for the sick tomorrow. But you can even get a second chance to your healing by going to that video that says prayer for women with issues in the womb. So go to the YouTube channel. God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching this broadcast. This broadcast is streamed from Kingston, Jamaica. My name is Shadeen Anglin and I am a servant of the Lord. It was a pleasure to minister the word tonight. I really hope your lives were not just blessed, but were impacted. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And remember, we meet again on Saturday as well at 7.30 Central Time or 7.30 Jamaican Time. I love you all so much, but there's one who loves you so much more than I do. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is our risen and soon coming King. Are you ready? I hope you are. God bless you.